a take on a new take on an old joke. So, instead of a rabbi, a priest, and a minister, a rabbi, a priest, a minister, and an imam walk into a synagogue. And what do they do there? They talk to each other. We gather there monthly to share our religious perspectives on mutually agreed topics and take, subject, or take uh, questions from the audience. We have three goals as we meet each month to demonstrate visible respect for one another, to emphasize our commonalities, and to celebrate and learn from our differences. Topics range from the theological to current social issues. My own interfaith journey began when I was in second grade. School began each day with the Pledge of Allegiance and the Lord's Prayer. But my best friend was Jewish, so I was happy for her the day the teacher announced that the prayer was being discontinued because my school district had been sued all the way to the Supreme Court. <laughs> At age 45, I discovered Jewish spirituality and I wanted to make it my life. When I told my wife Beth, the daughter of a Presbyterian minister, that I wanted to be a rabbi, she said, my mother, my grandmother, and my aunts all married ministers, so by marrying an atheist Jew, I thought I disproved the notion of predestination. <laughs> but I'm rethinking that. I was born and raised in Bangladesh, a Muslim predominant country. The only people of other faith I met there was Hindus and a few Buddhists. It is the first time I met a Christian or a Jew when I came to America. No, that is not my wife. That is my sister. And no, I was not given child marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I was involved with interfaith very early. Mrs. Claussen, who lived next door. Isn't that an adorable picture of me? Um, she would always talk to my mother across the fence and say, you're going to hell, Veronica. My mother would say, see you there, Edith. <laughs> But what's, what's, what, what caught me was that they cared about each other, and whenever there was trouble in anyone's house, they were the first ones there to help each other. In 1963, the Catholic Church opened its doors to the ecumenical uh, vision of religious unity to celebrate what we have in common with one another, which is a difficult but rewarding journey. Presbyterians have played a large role in American history. We held positions of privilege and leadership for over 200 years, but with changes in America's religious landscape, my congregation asks questions today like, could God be working through other religions? And how can I respectfully talk about my faith with people who aren't Christians? In 2008, a post on the Rabbi Listserv read, Outside Magazine says Bozeman's the number one place to live in the US and we're looking for a rabbi. Just ordained, I became the congregation's first resident rabbi. As a progressive congregation of 120 families, interfaith work is important to our members who are about half intermarried. When we came to Bozeman in 1989, there were only a few Muslims in town. Our community has grown, and currently we use the places in Bozeman and at MSU to do our gatherings. But recently we purchased this building for our future place of worship. God says in our scripture that, oh mankind, we created you from a single pair of male and female, and then we created different tribes and nations so that you know each other better. Violence in the name of religion is exactly the opposite of the teachings of religion. It's hijacking the religion of the faithful. When you do not know about something, the natural tendency is to ignore it. So fear of unknown is the greatest. When a nun wears her attire, she's a devout Catholic. When a Muslim woman covers her head, she's an oppressed. But look, an oppressed woman can roller skate. 9-11 <laughs> showed us that interfaith dialogue is not an option, it's a necessity. Those of us who have deeply held religious convictions have the greatest responsibility for building bridges of peace. For we know that shalom, salam, peace, is the way of the holy. And when Jesus was asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life, he told a story with a hero who had a different ethnicity and religion. The Good Samaritan knew that what loving his neighbor meant. That tells me that we all should be learning from those of other traditions, gaining insight into our own teachings. Interfaith is certainly something that is becoming more real. In 1964, Pope, John, or Pope Paul VI, the uh, uh, pontiff of the Roman Catholic Church, 
met the patriarch Athenagoras in Jerusalem, ending a 1,000 year mutual ex excommunication. First time they had ever talked. Interfaith uh, conversation helps us to sort out thorny issues in our day, too. So many issues that we can unite on to prevent injustice and help secure the freedom we cherish in our lives and in our country. Religions are like organs. One may be the kidney, another the liver, and so on. For much of human history, each organ was focused on its own health, trying to protect itself. But we now understand that each organ exists to serve the body. The body in this metaphor is the fragile and threatened Gaia, earth and all living things. The organs slash religions must work together to sustain Gaia. Each religion has wisdoms which we must share to sustain Gaia. Jews know the importance of periodically abstaining from work and, crea and creating that is central to Sabbath. Muslims understand surrendering oneself, and Christians understand the love at the center of the universe. We must teach one another for our mutual survival. Our work together has led to Jody and I swapping pulpits. When a Florida minister threatened to burn the Quran, Rahul read from the Quran during our worship. Leo and I officiated together at a funeral of a former nun who had converted to Judaism. We mutually assured her Catholic family that she's been doing God's work her entire life. We learned so much from each other. We discovered that we all worship the same God, the God of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. May peace be upon all of them. We found that our commonality is much more than our differences, and we learned to live with our commonality and built on it and respect our differences. And thank you.